All right, well, here we are live from Kansas Fest, and I'm sitting here with Mark Lemmert from the 6502 workshop. And some of you may remember that I interviewed Mark, uh, I guess it was about a year ago. Yeah, about that. Yeah, and uh, so welcome, Mark. And why don't you tell us what's been going on with 6502 workshop over the last year and how your game is coming? Yeah, well, thanks a lot. Um, it's uh, been coming along really great. We got some uh, exciting things here coming up that we've been working on, such as uh, Kickstarter. And uh, we've got some really exciting feelies that we'll uh, have uh, as part of the reward, such as our full color game box, nice. our uh, cloth map, which uh, folds up really nice. Put it right in the box or on the wall, whatever you want to do. And uh, in-game artifacts. We've got a jewel from the Dark Lord's crown. <laughs> Scary. Yeah. And uh, here we've got some coins. Excellent. And then uh, it's also going to have the floppy disks, right, to, to play the game on an Apple II. And, and then what about like if you want to play it on like a uh, Mac or Windows? There there will be uh, a USB stick uh, in every physical, uh, uh, every uh, reward tier that has a physical copy of the game will have both the five and a quarter floppy disks and also the USB stick so you can play on a modern uh, Windows, Mac or PC. Great, that sounds fantastic. And then some of the higher reward tiers, what kind of, what kind of things do they have in addition to the regular kind of collector's box? Some really, really cool stuff. Uh, you can, uh, in some of the higher reward tiers, do things like name your own town, dungeon, weapon. Uh, there's even a tier uh, for the game designer tier if you want to actually design like a uh, hundred tile uh, area of the map. Well, I know you've been working hard at the game. You know, last year, uh, you know, it, it looked actually pretty good, but I think in the, you know, a year has passed. So why don't you tell us maybe kind of what's, what's gone on for development over the last year? Sure, sure. We, we've uh, uh, been uh, doing a lot of work on the last year on finishing the game engine and uh, we've basically got the, the, the core engine done and uh, uh, have shifted into content development uh, at this point. You know, right now we're putting together the, uh, the towns, the castles, the dungeons, the various different maps and a uh, bunch of work like that yet to come. Uh, and also uh, prototype uh, mockingboard support has kind of evolved over the last year uh, and uh, as I mentioned in the Kansas Fest demo uh, it's not 100% for sure that we'll have the mockingbird support in the final game uh, but uh, we are definitely making a serious effort on it and therefore you know as demonstrated by the prototype uh, that uh, it will also be uh, available to see in the uh, video of our Kansas Fest presentation. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, do you want to show us maybe some of the stuff you've been working on and uh, how you accomplish it? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a great idea. We can take a look at the tool chain a bit and okay. just kind of see what's under the hood in developing an 8-bit RPG uh, in 2018. Awesome. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll take a take a good look at that. So, Mark, tell us what we're seeing here. Okay, well, uh, as mentioned before, uh, the, our double high res splash screen was unveiled here a few days ago at Kansas Fest, and we're, you know, give a little peek at something colorful because the rest of the time we're actually going to take a look at the tool chain, which has never really been uh, shown before, not really even talked about before, on what's under the hood of the Nox or Chaos development process for putting together a tile based RPG on the Apple II uh, here in 2018. And I'm going to kind of start at the top of the stack, if you will. Uh, the inputs into uh, the uh, the build process uh, start with uh, some spreadsheets, basically. And uh, these are the tools that we use to uh, develop uh, the, the maps and the shape tables for uh, the different artwork in the game and the uh, all the data tables for things like items in the game, mobs and their statistics. All of that is a big mass of data input that goes into the build process. And we use spreadsheets instead of developing PC side applications because spreadsheets are really flexible and we didn't know what the data structures were going to look like in the beginning and we thought, well, you know, let's, let's mock it up in spreadsheets and uh, that's the shortest distance between two points. Uh, in our thinking. So this uh, sheet up here right now uh, is uh, uh, for defining the mob statistics and uh, you know like we've got banded fighters, banded archers, battle mages, dragon, 
uh, and then uh, the statistics for each one, uh, their level, their hit points, magic points, experience, and I, this is a long list, we're not going to read each one, but you can see from the sheer number of stats on each individual mob, we've got you know quite a bit of uh, dynamicness to uh, the, uh, the mob uh, characters in the game. And then uh, these tables, uh, basically through Excel functions, concatenate and uh, decimal to hex or hexadecimal, depending on you know how, how we're entering it in. That all rolls up into this data here, and uh, this is uh, essentially a hex table in the format that the SBASM cross assembler understands. And uh, we just literally copy and paste this data here uh, out of the spreadsheet into a uh, 6502 assembly source file for a cross assembler and that's it that that's it's it's done it's now uh incorporated into uh, 6502 at that point similarly um uh, i mentioned uh, uh map data well it's uh, uh this is how we build the maps and this map is uh uh pretty pretty big it, it is as big as the ultima 5 map uh, 256 uh, tiles by 256 tiles, row, uh, width and depth, and uh, it is uh, basically a series of tile ID codes uh, from uh, 0 to hex uh, FF is the ID code for that represents the tiles uh, in the game. And uh, there's actually multiple tile sets. There's a different tile set for the overworld, a different one for towns, different one for castles, different one for dungeons, all of which have 256 tiles, zero through FF. So we've actually, we're gonna be uh, pushing a thousand, maybe over a thousand tiles in the game. Oh, these colors here, did you just program Excel to, to display that color for that particular yes. tax value? Okay, so the, just obviously well, for your own sanity and... Uh, Actually, not even to the point of programming Excel to display mm. a hex value based on uh, this color setting. This is totally cosmetic. I just changed the background color of the cells so visually I would remember, that, oh yeah, this is water. I don't remember, you know, that E7 has, a, you know, is uh, shallow water. Uh, the, uh, uh, the colors and things like that of the tiles themselves is actually taken care of in the, in the shape tables. Got it. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's how we lay out the maps. And uh, like with the uh, spreadsheet for the mobs we we're looking at, this all gets built into a massive hex table, uh, basically starting here. And uh, you know we can scroll down, and eventually we get all the way down to uh, you know like the last zone here. Uh, scroll over to the side, and here, okay, yeah, we got it. This is our cross assembler label name. And this is the actual string of hex values for that particular region. And this just becomes a massive copy and paste into the source code, uh, wow. as with these other spreadsheet-driven yeah. uh, tool, data tools that we've got. Uh, now getting into the, uh, uh, the cross-assembler side of it, that's kind of the next layer, really, in the, uh, in the process, the build process. Uh, so we're using uh, Notepad++ as the editor. Uh, as mentioned, SBA ASM is the cross assembler, but cross assemblers they just you know take input from a text file. So use any editor that you want. We chose Notepad plus plus, and uh, the, I'm using the workspace to kind of keep things organized. And we'll just close those folders to kind of see it at the top level. We've you know we got our batch files in here, our, our uh, bootloader source code, uh, data you know all kinds of data in here for the the tile sets and. Uh, is broken down then by disk. You know, I can peek at the town disk and we'll see, okay, we got uh, a couple different locations, a couple different floors, and then we finally get down to the final folder here. You know, we, we have a map file and an SPR file, which uh, is the map object data. Uh, and then every kind of, you know, location has to have that kind of data uh, associated with it. So we just, you know, have it kind of nice and organized there or sort of organized, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we get in, you know, get into the, uh, the kind of the main files of the game. Um, you know, we've got, uh, like the main game loop, uh, that, uh, sits there and waits for a key press and then does things. <laughs> um, you know, we've got, uh, routines in here for NPC conversation, uh, for, Combat, all kinds of routines there for combat. Combat's pretty robust uh, in Nox or Chaos. 
a whole bunch of uh, routines here for inventory because inventory has got a really nice menu driven system took a lot of code for that from here it really kind of comes down to uh, the the batch files that drive the build process which we'll take a look at this for example this is our hard drive uh, build file uh, stage uh, one of two and uh, if we go kind of at the top you know we'll just kind of flip through a little bit of what it does um, so in the batch file go1hd.bat is executed from the command line uh, it starts out by uh, uh, calling a routine that compresses the map data for uh, both uh, overworld and underworld type maps and it compresses it using ZX7 uh, that's the compression algorithm and then go down here this is the main call to uh, SBASM and that's going to uh, assemble all of the source code files uh, and translate it into uh, binary files that uh, are in 6502 machine language. Uh, we got some error checking in here so the build process terminates if there's errors. Uh, then we get down here with uh, the uh, NPC uh, speech text. Uh, that's all compressed as well using ZX7, so there's some code to make that happen. Um, and then we call stage two, and stage two of the build process uh, is really about creating disk images. At this point, we've got binary files for basically everything, and so here, you know, we're just uh, uh, kind of renaming things to get them in the proper format for disk image, and then ultimately uh, using Caddius. Uh, by uh, uh, what's their name? Uh, guys out in France, uh, Antoine, Antoine and, and uh, Olivier. I forget yeah. their company name though. Yeah. Um, Brutal Deluxe. Brutal Deluxe. Yes, thank you, Brutal Deluxe for Cadius. Uh, we we love how well that works. And uh, crank that off, and it gets all the files, uh, uh, binary files, written onto the disk images. Wow, that's great. So can can we kind of see this in action? Like yeah, absolutely. That's that's uh that's what I'd like to do next. And uh, uh, the last thing to mention here, which will put it on context, is after the disk image uh, is built, we, uh, this section here does a distribution, and it takes the disk image and copies it to different folders, like over to Apple Win, over to ADT Pro. If I was going to burn it onto floppy disk to run on real Apple II hardware, and uh, uh, then also it copies it over to a Dropbox folder. Mm -hmm. And uh, the purpose of that is, well, if I want to test in, in the Virtual 2 emulator on the Mac, you know, then uh, that Dropbox folder is sitting over on the map. I just fire up the disk image awesome. in Virtual 2. So it's actually seamless between the PC and Mac from a build uh, process, environmental process here, um, which uh, I find to be really handy. So, but yeah, we're going to do a little demo here, a little fun one too. Uh, so uh, back to the spreadsheet tools, I mentioned, you know, shape tables are managed via spreadsheet tools. So let's take a look at uh, shape tables. And um, uh, let's start with this one here. So this is the shape table for one of the mountains. We have mountains of a couple different sizes. It's a, this is a large mountain. And so using the Excel uh, cells, we just created a pixel grid here uh, representing the, the Apple II a high res screen for a 14 by 16 size tile. We turn the the, uh, the pixels on and off using ones and zeros. We have to follow all the rules of the Apple II screen as far as what colors can go where and you know you get two adjacent pixels turned on makes white you know it gets really you know weird like that but uh, so we still have to keep all that in mind when designing the graphics but then this data gets uh, converted uh, to uh, to binary, the nibbles are flipped around and converted to hex, and all of the gymnastics that go on that Lord British, you know, thank you Lord British did on uh, graph paper uh, all those years ago, you know, we got Excel taken care of uh, for us, and, uh, you know, turning into ultimately a hex table that gets copied and pasted into the source code uh, as before. So, hey, we're going to have some fun, and uh, open up our uh, tile uh, uh, template here for a cow shape. <laughs> and what could we do with this cow? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll go down and grab uh, our hex table, find our shape tables here. Okay, so tile ID 40 is normally grass, 
Well, tile ID 40 is now going to be attached to the shape table data for our cow. Normally the cow was animated. We just grabbed one frame, uh, uh, so we won't uh, be working with an animated cow on this purpose. But the end result here is uh, we're going to build the game, and uh, we should see a lot of cows on the screen. So we'll run that batch file I mentioned before, go1hd. Okay, so now we've run the build process uh, that's created the uh, disk image file with all the binary uh, 6502 binary files for the game. Uh, it copied one of those disk images, uh, one copy of the disk image over to a Dropbox folder, as mentioned before, uh, which is picked up here on the Mac uh, and uh, launched in uh, Virtual 2. So we'll go ahead and finish the boot of the game and see the result of. Uh, taking the cow shape table data and attaching it to tile ID 40, which is normally grass uh, in the map data. And here we are, we, we now have a, a road that's uh, going through a field of cows. <laughs> Excellent, it's like an entire herd of them. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Now, are these mad cows? Will they attack you eventually? <laughs> well, you know, that's a great question. You, you, you may or may not encounter a mad cow in the game that will attack you, but from a technology standpoint, that's a really interesting question because, uh, yeah, this looks like, you know, a cow that would, you know, potentially attack you, but they're, they're, notice also they're very stationary because as far as the game engine is concerned, it doesn't think that they're cows. It thinks that they're terrain ah. because tile ID 40 is a terrain tile ID and we just swapped out the shape table that controls what pixels are drawn. But as far as the game engine is concerned, I mean, look, we can walk on the cows, <laughs> you know, so uh, it might as well be grass as far as the game engine is concerned. Excellent. Uh, which, you know, interestingly, if anybody ever played like Ultima 4 and uh, was walking around Britannia and put the uh, 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 dungeon or underworld disc in the drive, when you shouldn't have and started walking around more, all of a sudden it does a disc load and you got crazy stuff on the screen. This has a lot to do with why that happened in, uh, <laughs> in, in Ultima back then because uh, essentially tiles are just, they're just hex numbers. You know, tile, tile ID hex 40, you know, we said that was grass, well now it's cows. And uh, when you've got the wrong disc in the drive in Ultima, it's just going out and reading a sector on disk that it's expecting to be uh, map data, except it's not because you got a different disk in there, and so all of a sudden it's pulled in, you know, different tile IDs, uh, and so it's rendering the wrong shapes, you know, as a result, and you get all kinds of, you know, silliness. So, cool. um, uh, anyway, yes, uh, so that that's, uh, completes the demonstration of uh, the build process, and, 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 and also notably how fast it is to make a change to the game, even a massive one, you know, visually uh, to, to the artwork, it, it only just takes, uh, you know, about 60, uh, 90 seconds to actually see that on screen in an emulator. A add on another two minutes, and I could have it on a floppy disk running on real hardware. All right, well, Mark, thanks for showing us all that awesome content from Nox Archaeist and kind of your build pipeline. And uh, what can we expect next? Uh, the, uh, probably the next update that major update at least that we'll be sharing will be the launch of the the kickstarter uh and i uh, want to thank everybody for you know their interest uh, in nox or cast and uh uh you know thanks in advance for your uh, support of our, our upcoming kickstarter and we really appreciate it all right well you've heard it all from uh kansas fest 2018 and uh thanks mark for coming on the show thanks for having me all right